All right. Hello, YouTube. My name is Alan, and it's time, once again, let's talk some metal. Tonight, we're going to be talking paramedal, but not the usual European or American flavors of paramedal. Note, today we are going to be talking Brazilian paramedal with three excellent bands who are every bit as good as any band out of Germany or the United States. So, sure, when people think of Brazil and heavy metal, they're of course going to think of the heavier end of the metal spectrum with you know, death metal, black metal, stuff like that. But Brazil has put out some extremely good power metal bands over the years as well. And tonight we're going to take a look and a listen at three of them. I'm going to jump right on into this with the earliest of the batch that I'm aware of is a band that was called Viper. Now, their Viper is a pretty generic name. There have been other heavy metal bands called Viper over the years. The one I'm talking about has this logo. Uh, this is the Brazilian Viper, started by a pair of brothers, and they got their first album out way back in 1987. It was an album called Soldiers of Sunrise. I have had it in the past. I don't own a physical copy of it anymore. It was a fairly good, but you know, also somewhat straightforward power metal band. You could tell you know, it was a younger band sort of getting their feet a little bit. So a decent material, didn't blow me away. But their sophomore effort, which came out in 1989, uh, was much stronger. And that's this album called Theater of Fate. Um, the big thing with Viper at this point is they had a very charismatic front man named Andres Matos. And he was heavily influenced by like a lot of classical music. And you could very much hear that in Viper style. Um, some people at the time described Theater of Fate as sounding a little bit like Halloween, if Halloween had more of a traditional metal framework rather than the power speed metal framework. Rather than me just endlessly try to describe it, let's give you a chance to hear a little bit of this. So here is a clip from Viper's Theater of Fate album with a song called At Least a Chance. a little bit of Vipers, at least a chance, from the Theater of Fate album, their sophomore effort. And yes, to my ears at least, I hear a big influence from Keeper of the Seven Keys Part One. But again, with you know, more classical flourishes from Andres Matos' background, he was, you know, got into, you know, composing and stuff, you know, at a pretty early age, and that was always part of his sound and his vibe. So excellent album, obviously didn't get a, you know, ton of attention in 1989, being from Brazil, distribution stuff was an issue. I found out about this album eh, probably sometime around 1993, 1994, was able to order it from uh, Sentinel Steel Records, which was the only place I knew of that was importing it. And yeah, I was really blown away. I've always liked the album. The production could use some help. You know, it is a bit thin sounding, but again, you have to consider the context of where it was recorded. 
Uh, probably not a lot of you know, producers who specialized in power metal in Brazil in the late 1980s. Uh, so it's still a good album despite the production job. Now, um, the band would actually um, see a fracture develop in the wake of that album. The uh, founding brothers, I think their last names were Praselli. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. Uh, they wanted to take the band in a more traditional metal direction. Uh, Matos was interested in that more classically inspired sort of, you know, progressive uh, power metal direction. So they parted ways and Viper would continue on without him and do a few more albums. Their follow-up was this one called Evolution. Kind of a goofy cover, but I kind of like it for whatever reason. And yes, you know, new vocalist here, the uh, you know, symphonic influences are gone and it's a more straightforward album. It rocks out pretty well. And just to show you what a difference in the sound there is. And again, this one came out around 92. Let's check out a clip from Viper's Evolution album as well. And this is the track Rebel Maniac. So yeah, you can tell they're cranking it up and banging it out a little more straightforward than what we heard on Theater of Fate, but Viper still trying in a real cracking effort on the Evolution album. And it was one of the brothers, Pitt Pacelli, the bassist, who took over the vocal duties. So the band was operating as a four-piece at this time after Andres Matros had moved on to a new project. And that's going to be our second band tonight. Uh, Matos, much too talented to... You know, just sit on the sidelines and do nothing. So he established a band called Angra. Angra, much better known than Viper. They put out uh, several albums. They're actually still a going concern with a different lineup, even after all these years. Uh, they got a demo out that did get just a little circulation in the U.S. Again, thanks to outlets like Sentinel Steel Records, I actually ended up ordering the demo and was on Angra's fan club mailing list for a while. I may still have a couple of the old fan club mailings laying around. I meant to look around for them, but not sure exactly where they would be. So maybe we'll find those and show them off another time. But Angra, you know, ended up on the Steamhammer label uh, through Europe. And after the demo came out, launched their first album called Angels Cry. This was around 1993. And, you know, the thing with Angra is they do operate very much in that sort of lighter, softer end of the power metal spectrum. They can play faster songs that are very good when they want to. But, you know, especially with, you know, Matos's influences and his vocal style, they do a lot of, you know, what you might describe as pretty sounding uh, power metal as well. You know, these are not all meant to be, you know, horns in the air, neck breaking, head banging anthems necessarily. Nevertheless, a lot of very cool music here. Uh, several of the songs on this were taken from the demo. And what I'll play you a clip of is actually the demo version, which I still have a digital copy of. Don't have the original demo tape anymore. Sold that or traded it years ago. But let's check out uh, a little bit of the track Carry On. Now I'm going to start at about the 45 second mark on this. I'll jump forward a little bit just because it has sort of a long classically inspired intro. 
Uh, we'll play a little bit of that, but we want to get into the real song itself too. So here's Carry On by Angra. So that is Anger. That's the demo version of a track called Carry On, which also showed up on that first album I was holding up called Angels Cry. You can tell Matos was very much picking up right where he left off with the Theater of Fate album he had done with Viper and then expanding that sound like the symphonic direction, uh, really diving deep into that. Now, Matos would do three albums with Angra. All of them were pretty well received with power metal fans. And then he would move on. Uh, he would do a solo band project for a while. Uh, also worked with a band called Shaman. Unfortunately, he passed away around 2019. So he's no longer with us. Uh, after Matos left following Angra's third album, they brought in a new vocalist and had you know, a successful run of albums that started to get more and better distribution. That was around the time, about 2001, when again, power metal had sort of reestablished itself as a real force in the heavy metal community in the wake of success from bands like Hammerfall and those acts. And so, yeah, Angra was getting more attention, better distribution. You could actually start to find some of their albums like Temple of Shadows and Aurora Consurgus you know, in more and more record stores, even in the United States. It no longer was something that you had to special order or uh, track down on Amazon or eBay only. So yeah, Anger has been an ongoing concern all the time. I've owned a lot of Anger's albums. They're a band that I tend to have most of their stuff on digital format rather than hard format. I like a lot of songs, you know, on each album I've heard. They're just not a band I pull out and play very often. But, you know, they've been a, you know, standout band on the Brazilian metal scene for a long time, and they deserve all the props they get. All right, our third and last entry tonight, looking at parallel bands from Brazil, a uh, very little known band, but did some excellent material in the 21st century. And this is a band called Hibria. Uh, Hibria kind of showed up out of nowhere, to my knowledge. I actually found this in a used CD bin where I was living at the time. Didn't know what it was, never had heard of the band. Uh, the cover didn't really inspire me to check it out right away, but it sat there in the used bin for you know probably a couple of months. And eventually I dialed up the band and I believe I dialed them up on MySpace, which tells you exactly which little window of time this was happening during. 
and I heard, you know, a couple of the songs on their MySpace page, and I instantly just went right back to the record store the next day and bought the thing. I was just like, oh, yeah, that's, I, I, I need that. If you have not heard Hibria, let me just let the music do the talking before we discuss them. If you're not familiar with this band, I think you're in for a treat here. This is a little bit of the track called Millennial Quest. <laughs> absolutely killing it on millennial quest off of their debut album defying the rules just blistering beautiful majestic and tough sounding power metal as good as anything that any european band was doing at the time this came out in 2004 and again sort of a relative group of unknowns but absolutely slay it um Love everything about this album. The songs tend to run a little long, more tracks like up in that six minute mark, but it works pretty well. It gives them a little bit more of a long form epic vibe that adds to the songs. While the, you know, the cover art itself may not be amazing, I kind of like the vibe they went for, just the overall sort of, you know, uh, Mad Max motorcycle, you know, demolition derby from hell kind of thing going on, which, you know, fits the mood and the style of the music quite well. Um, power metal bands sometimes tend to wallow in the you know, medieval fantasy tropes a little bit too much. It works, but it's been done to death. Dragon, sword, castle, hail, blah, blah, blah. Eh, we've all heard that a hundred times. You don't hear bands do this sort of you know, more urban style of street warfare quite as often. And I thought it actually gave them you know, a little more of a unique appearance and sound. And the music is just absolutely brilliant. Cannot get enough of defying the rules from Hibria. And Hibria has stuck around. It was not a one and done band. They came back in 2008 uh, with their sophomore effort called the Skull Collectors. Not, not a great uh, piece of cover art here, I won't lie. Uh, the sound, again, very tight. Not as strong as the debut in my opinion, but still has some really strong songs on it. If you like the debut, you'll still be happy with the second album on Skull Collectors. And then the third album came out in 2011. It was called The Blind Ride. On this one, they do change gears just a little bit. The songs here start to become a lot more compact. Uh, they're not doing those longer, drawn-out epics anymore. Uh, the songs are sticking to a shorter length, and the music is very dense, for lack of a better word. It's still power metal in style, absolutely. But it's just like they're taking what used to be a seven-minute song and taking all of that goodness and scrunching it maybe into a four-minute song. So everything is very, very tight on this album. It's a very, very good album. Um, after this, they did a live album, Blinded by Tokyo, and it's very good. It shows off the material from this era very, very nicely. After that point, unfortunately, the wheels kind of came off the motorcycle. Uh, they had lineup issues, and when they came back for their fourth album, the sound was much plainer. They, they sort of lost those majestic epic elements. Uh, the, 
the playing, it just didn't have that, you know, real sizzle to the guitars. It just didn't have, you know, those real burning leads and stuff. It, it just felt kind of flat, which was a bit of a disappointment. They've continued on and done several albums over the past decade. I've only heard one or two of them. And I have to be honest, none of them really impressed me that much. I have not heard all of them. Uh, just glancing at like, you know, reviews on Metal Archives. It seems like the folks who bother to review them usually give them pretty bad reviews, which is a shame. You know, this is a band that, you know, really flat out, like the cover of their third album was flat out on fire for a while. And I guess you know, lineup changes and things eventually caught up to them. And maybe they lost the spark a little bit. But absolutely, you should check out those first three Hybria albums. They are insane power metal killers. A little bit the opposite of Angra. N nothing classically influenced or progressive or pretty sounding there whatsoever. Just, you know, straight out screaming heavy metal all day, all night. All right, that is going to wrap it up. Uh, Brazil obviously has put out some excellent power metal, and I'm betting there's some more bands from that scene that I'm completely unaware of. So let's talk metal in the comments down below and tell me what other bands from Brazil or other areas in South America, what other, other power metal bands from down there that I've just never heard of and need to check out. I know there's a lot of excellent traditional metal out of Mexico, for example, but, you know, that's probably, you know, different country, different region, topic for another video, perhaps. So we'll come back to bands like Voltax and those some other night. But for now, let's talk uh, the South American scene. Let me know what bands I need to go check out and add to my South American Brazilian power metal uh, CD shelf. All right, that's going to do it for today. Everybody take care. And as always, until next time, make sure to keep banging your head.